What's going on everybody? Thank you so much for coming back to another video and in today's video we're going to be talking about Friday the 13th part 2. So here we are with the sequel of Friday the 13th just one year after the release of the first original film. You get the sequel and it definitely shows. A lot of people don't know that this is actually the one where Jason actually becomes the killer for the first time. In the last movie if you watch my review for it there is a brief moment with Jason but the killer ends up turning out to be his mom which is a genuine surprise for some who maybe have never seen these movies and go back to watch it. Now if you watch my review for the first movie you can know I wasn't in love with the film upon rewatch. There's a lot about it that's kind of boring, that doesn't really hold up, a lot about the visuals and this and that that I didn't really love. There are some genuine surprises. I think if you've never seen this franchise and you were expecting a specific thing, if you watched that film kind of going in blind, but for the most part, it's a pretty standard horror film that hasn't really aged very well. It definitely has its place in horror history though, so I never want to discredit that. It's definitely a film and a franchise that I definitely appreciate for its role in horror, and I love the character of Jason just on an iconic visual level. But yeah, after watching the first film, I just wasn't crazy about it. So going into this one, I was hoping to, you know, kind of have something better to say about this one. And I got to say, personally, I found this to be worse than the first film. It's just the same film done all over again, except this time Jason is the killer. You don't really see him very much for a big punk chunk of the film outside of just seeing his hands or the feet of him walking, but you don't really see his face. And when you finally do get to see what he's got going on in his face, he's just wearing like a rucksack over his head, a potato sack or so with one eye cut out. And that's essentially who Jason is in this film. I've always appreciated this film for being the one Jason film where he's wearing the sack on his head. It's like the little different one as far as the visuals go. But as far as everybody else goes in this film, Similar to the last one, you just have a group of teens, this group of people who are going to be running this camp that are just a bunch of horny, sleazy kids that uh, just start dying throughout the film and you don't really care too much. Even though I don't love these films, I definitely appreciate their role in horror. I do love the character of Jason and there are some good kills in this film. I'll go ahead and say it right now, my favorite kill in the film is this one. <laughs> I think it's the most inventive and kind of fun and almost funny when you watch it. As far as the other ones go, majority of the kills in this film are pretty standard. A lot of them are kind of reused kills from the first film, and there's really nothing about it that really stands out outside of the way Jason looks in this film, the fact that Jason is the killer on an overall level, and the very end of this film. I'm not gonna lie, I highly debated reviewing this with the third film because they are really similar. When I get to the third film, I'll talk about that a little bit more, I'll get into some spoilers, but yeah, for this film, I feel like a lot of the kills are standard, the cinematography and all of that doesn't really hold up. The performances are really bad, and sure, you don't really look for that when you're watching this kind of film you know you're expecting it's just gonna be a bunch of dumb people who are gonna get killed by Jason throughout the film that's really what you care about you care about the slasher doing the killing but that's one thing that kind of bored me about this film is that there's a lot of screen time where there's not kills happening you don't really care about any of the characters you're not rooting for everybody in the first film there's at least some sort of weird intrigue to it but I think this one is so much a copy of the first film just with Jason being the killer that it's just not as exciting until the very end of the film at the end of the film you finally get to see Jason without his mask as a fully grown adult and he's definitely like this half deformed hillbilly looking guy. It kind of looks like the guy from the Goonies. I can't remember his name right now, but you, you guys know who I'm talking about. Hey, you guys. And then probably the coolest thing that you see at the end of this film that kind of builds up the story of Jason is that he has a shrine where his mom's head, who was had her head chopped off in the last film, he has her head set up on this little shrine. He has her uh, sweater in, that's sitting there on the ground. And yeah, that's kind of one of the coolest things that's in this film, something that's kind of creepy. You kind of get a little bit of a glimpse into what Jason does on his free time, setting up this head shrine of his mom. It's a little bit weird, but yeah, outside of that, this film is something I don't have too much to say about. This is a really standard old school slasher film that, you know, just kind of is okay going back and watching it. There's nothing about it that's super exciting. I do enjoy a lot of the kills in this film, specifically that one I mentioned earlier, but a lot of the screen time that you're spending with these characters and all these like really weird characters that are just really badly acted, I just can't help but feel like, uh, this isn't the kind of cheesiness that I like in slasher films personally. You can have a laugh at it, don't get me wrong. I was definitely laughing throughout the entirety of this film at the bad performances. And this will probably not be the last time I watch this movie, to be completely honest. This is a movie that I feel, this franchise, I will rewatch it every here and there, specifically on around Halloween. So it was nice to go back and revisit it. But yeah, this is definitely one of the more forgettable ones. The second and third one I'm finding to be the more forgettable ones. I've watched the first eight so far at the time that I'm filming this. So, you know, I feel like I got a pretty good basis of all these films and the second and third film just are the most forgettable for me so yeah guys thank you so much for watching this review i don't have too much to say so feel free to leave your comments down below do you love this film do you not love this film whatever your thoughts on it if you're completely on the opposite end of me i would love to hear what you guys have to say about this movie because there are things here i like about it as far as just the fact that i love jason and i have respect for the friday the 13th name but the film itself just isn't as exciting and engaging for me and i just couldn't help but feel a little bit bored at times like a lot of it just doesn't hold up and there really isn't that charm that i really look for when it comes to going 
going back to classic horror films or just classic films in general. There's just something about it that felt very cut and paste of the first film and eh, it's just eh. So yeah guys, that's gonna be my thoughts. Leave your comments down below. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. Sorry if I was sweaty in this video. It is so hot in here right now. I'm in a garage and the heat is ridiculous here in Florida today. So anyway, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate each and every single one of you guys for watching and I'll see each and every single one of you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.